Okay, I want to talk to you tonight about a, a pretty basic application of differential equations, ordinary differential equations in a physics application. And it's a classical problem of dealing with a chain that is sliding across a table uh, and then it's also falling off the table. So the weight of the chain falling off the table is going to cause the chain to start uh, accelerating down this path. Now, this application that I'm going to do is going to give you some basic variables. It's going to give us a chain with the length L and the, um, the height that it's going to slide down is also the length L. Okay, And I've labeled this graph here that this segment here X is the uh, little portion of the chain that is actually hanging off the edge because we're going to have to deal with that because we're going to be dealing with a linear mass density of a chain which is a uniform linear mass density. This is a very uh, simple application. Uh, you know, in reality, this chain does not completely uh, fold over and fall nicely like that. Uh, it starts to generate a, a type of a momentum going, and you'll, you'll see this bulge out at the edge. Uh, it, we're also not going to get involved with deriving time-based applications of this because we're going to have to get into something called Lagrange multipliers, and so. What I'm giving you now is just the very basics of how to find the speed when this chain hits the bottom. Okay, And I'm going to be working primarily with uh, these equations as a function of position, not time. I'm going to eliminate the parameter of time. You're going to see how we're going to do that. Then after I uh, solve this equation, I'm going to solve it using uh, simple conservation of mechanical energy. And it's, you're going to see that that's like a one-step process. But let's go ahead and start this process now. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Let's go to 100% here. So there you go. There's our picture. So we have a chain length L sliding off a frictionless table with a height L off the ground. What is the speed of the chain when it hits the ground? So again, no friction on this table. This is the most basic application we can get of this problem. So the first thing we need to understand when we're dealing with a problem like this is that um, something that has a uniform mass has something called a linear mass density. And the linear mass density, a lot of times we're going to use the letter lambda. And that is basically going to say that the, uh, the, the linear mass density is going to be the mass total divided by the length. Okay, So basically, it's evenly distributed across that chain. Okay, It's going to be evenly distributed across the chain. In other words, I take the total mass, total mass total, Okay. I'll call that mass total. Okay, let's just call that mass total. And I'm dividing it across the chain. It's a density function. It's just evenly divided across this chain. And this chain has a length L. So is this height here. So when we're dealing with an equation like this, the first thing that I would do is we have a mass hanging off an edge here. Uh, we're just going to do a simple free body diagram here. And we're going to start out with um, Newton's second law here. So I'm going to come out here with the sum of the forces here. Uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and call this the x-direction. Let's just make it to, to keep things simple. Let's just assume that this axis just kind of wraps around like this. So I'm going to say the sum of the forces in the x equals m total a net in that direction. Okay, so we're starting out with that basic application here. So what's going on? What does the free body diagram look like? Well, if I did a free body diagram, all that I would see in this application is just a mass hanging down here. So I have this mass here, okay, which is going to change by the way. This mass here, so I'm going to put mass as a function of x times g, okay, because that mass is changing by the way. It's changing every time a new bead comes down. And that's going to equal that's going to equal the total mass times the net acceleration. Okay, So what is that? what's the difference between this one and the total mass? Well, the total mass here is accelerating together, even though this little portion here is the only one that's going to be affected by gravity. So this little portion here, okay, this little portion here is going to be your m of x. So if I move this over just a little bit, let me move this over like this. This little portion right here is going to be your m of x right here. So this is your m as a function of x. So that little portion hanging, and it's changing all the time, right? It's changing. 
but the good thing is it's changing as a linear uh, density function so we're gonna learn how to do that in a minute okay so here's our here's what I have going on here using Newton's second law so that's what I'm saying the sum of the forces in the x equals m total the total chain because it shares the acceleration um, times acceleration in the x okay so let's go ahead and start here so the sum of my forces in the x here is just gonna be this function here mass is a function of x times g is gonna equal m total a net okay so there's my acceleration vector there's my acceleration due to gravity okay so the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna calculate this mass as a function of x and I'm gonna use the linear mass density so that's gonna give me lambda times x times g is gonna equal mass total times a net okay now remember lambda is gonna be mass total over length so I'm gonna have mass total here over the length okay that's lambda times x times g is gonna equal mass total and my acceleration net, my net acceleration, I'm going to write as a function of velocity, the differential of the change of the velocity with respect to time. Now I told you I wasn't going to deal much with time in this application. I'm going to eliminate this parameter right now. Let me show you what we're going to do here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to break this down. I'm going to rewrite this equation here. So I'm going to have the mass total over the length times x times g equals the mass total okay and now dv dt I'm gonna re write, rewrite this as the chain rule dv dx times dx dt okay and what's gonna happen is this dx dt right here this is gonna become simply velocity you're gonna see in the next step that's gonna become velocity so that little dx dt there, that's going to become velocity. And by doing that, I'm going to get rid of this parameter of time altogether. Time really becomes a nasty parameter to solve. So this application, like I said, is, is, a, is a pretty basic one uh, where we're going to eliminate that parameter. Okay. So again, we're going to rewrite this out again. Mass total over the length times x times g is going to equal mass total again uh, dv dx times v okay now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna separate my variables I wanna get all of my v's and my dv's on one side and all of my x's and my dx's on another side remember the rest of these are basically constants right so let me just show you what are constants here that's a constant sorry that's a constant that's a constant right there's your constant again and that length is constant so what I wanna do is I wanna get all of my constants um, basically to the left here so I'm going to have mass total g over L times x. And I'm going to bring this dx over. So I'm going to have x dx like this, okay, equals mass total v dv. Okay. So what I can do now is I can start canceling out some parameters here. I'm just going to get rid of the, the mass total. We don't even need that anymore because this is going to be purely an acceleration function. So now what do I have here? I have a very simple ordinary differential equation and I'm going to go ahead and integrate both sides. Now these are constants. They're going to stay on the outside. So I'm going to have G over L here. Okay. And I'm going to take an integral here. Okay. Now my x value that I'm going to integrate here it's going to start from here okay this is would be a distance of zero in terms of the mass and it's going to integrate all the way down okay right when it hits the ground okay so I'm starting from zero and I'm going to go my x is going to start from zero and then I'm going to go all the way down to x equals L okay so I'm going to integrate all the way down across that parameter so when I when I integrate this I'm going to say x is going to start from zero and x is going to go to L right there of x times d of x and what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna basically take the parameter here 
of v equals zero. I'm going to start. I'm, I'm basically starting from when the first bead came off the table. I know I I drew it here as if they were already falling off, but this this problem is they they just started falling off the table, and they're going to keep going down. So my v final is just going to be v and v dv. Now when you're integrating, uh, it's really important to uh, to always try to create your boundary conditions here as much as possible. Uh, you can do an indefinite integral, but you're going to pick up a constant, and that's really not a very um, good way to work through these problems. So always try to define your boundary conditions if you can, because you can just go right away with this problem. Okay, so you have g over l here, and I'm going to integrate this now. So that's going to be x squared over 2, okay, evaluated from uh, 0 to l, okay, equals, and this is going to be just v squared over 2, evaluated from 0 to v, like this. Okay, so right now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plug this in. So I'm going to get g, and this is going to be l squared over 2 minus 0, right? Because g over l, I'll just, I'll just evaluate it so you can see it. l squared over 2 minus 0 over 2, right? That's what that is. I just plug that in, equals, and then this is just going to be v squared over 2 minus 0 over 2. And again, they're both squared, but what difference does that make, right? Okay. So, I'm going to have here g over l, you know, times l squared over 2 equals v squared over 2. And what's going to happen here is we're going to end up having uh, some cancellations go into play here. I'm going to cancel out this link down here with one of these, and these twos are going to cancel out across here. So when I solve the final equation here, I'm going to I'm going to switch this around. So you're going to have v squared equals g l. So the speed when it hits the ground is going to be the square root of g l. Okay. So that's the speed calculated by doing the very basic ordinary differential equation uh, by separating those variables. Now, there's a much easier way to do this, okay? That's a, that was a lot of steps, right? Okay, but there's a, it's important to go through this, by the way, because what if I wanted to find out the speed at any, at any point? Um, you know, this, this becomes more important. And understanding the application of this through a differential is important. If you need to derive a function as a function of time, a function of distance, this particular case was when it was at the ground. Another much simpler way to do this is just uh, solving with energy. Okay? So, when we start out the, the basic equation up here, okay, the, the beads have all potential energy at the top. So I'm basically going to say my um, potential energy at the top, my potential energy initial, plus the kinetic energy initial, equals the potential energy at the bottom, plus the kinetic energy at the bottom. So again, at the top, uh, just, just so you know, we have all of our beads up here. It's all potential energy, right? And then once, once it, it's fallen completely, this is what the situation looks like here. So we have our before and our after picture here. So this is our, this is the before, this is the initial, or the before, and this is the final or the after here. So in the beginning we have no kinetic energy, so that term just goes to zero. At the end, um, we actually have the have to look at the center of mass. So my center of mass is right here. So how far did the center of mass move? Well, it only moved about half of that length. Okay, because it moved from here to here. You see that? So that center of mass only moved a distance of L over 2 because it's a uniform height. So my U initial is going to be simply the total mass, which I'll write it in black here, the total mass times G times L, which is the total height, right? Remember, this is the big, this is the big height in here, right? Total height, okay, equals M total, right? g and then l over 2 here plus 1 half mv squared m total v squared okay and so basically what I'm going to do in this next step is just cancel out my masses because it doesn't matter we can get rid of them once again 
and they sh we should get rid of them because it's just like the other problem. And so now I just combine these two terms of G and L. So I bring this G GL over 2 over here, so I'm going to have GL minus GL over 2 equals 1 half V squared. So when I combine these terms, I'm just going to get GL over 2 equals 1 half V squared. Okay, twos are going to cancel like this. I'm going to get the same outcome here, very simply, V squared equals GL. And then I'm going to get V equals the square root of GL. So that I think that was a little bit easier using energy. Uh, but you can see you get the same outcome both ways. It's just the first way was a lot longer to go about the process. Okay, but it just depends depends what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, you know, it's good to understand energy. Energy is a nice shortcut, but a lot of times it doesn't really tell you. It's just before and after pictures. It's not going to tell you the story in between uh, as well. Uh, if you're dealing with uh, differential applications and you're deriving your functions, you're going to be able to tell what's going on in between, not just the before and after. Okay, so so energy is nice because we, when we're dealing with nonlinear applications, you know it always works. I mean, we we know what it is before, we know what it is after. It's conserved, and we'll get our final snapshot. But again, this case um, with this with this differential is important for us to understand a lot of things. Just to understand how to deal with a linear mass density function, um, how to uh, get rid of the parameter of time uh, by creating basically acceleration net equaling um, you know dvdt and then eventually getting rid of that parameter of time and just recognizing that that is another way to express acceleration net okay as a function and then the basic concept of separating and integrating and then understanding how to pick our boundary conditions and, uh, and then ultimately deriving an equation okay for that final speed at a given height all right so I hope you enjoyed that video, and uh, I'm going to try to put some more applications of advanced physics. But this is a good one to get you started. I think if you can master these concepts, you're going to you're going to be on your way uh, to to learning how to to do some more advanced applications of differential analysis and and physics problems. All right, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.